what yeah. is your uh, RuPaul drag queen name, if you have one? Oh, God, that's a great, that's a great name. M- Mushy Peas. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Who knew I'd be Zooming at 69? <laughs> oh, my God, 69. Amazing. What oh, age? yeah. I was, I, was, I was couldn't wait to get to 69 for the jokes and the memes to start. And I haven't <laughs> seen or heard one yet. Happy International doing? Day of Heavy Metal, Rob. Happy Heavy Metal International Day to everybody around the world. I'm doing great, thank you. I'm isolating, I'm quarantining, I'm washing my hands. I'm <laughs> staying six feet away from every person on the planet. And uh, <laughs> I'm miserable because I want to be on the road with my beautiful band and seeing all of our beautiful heavy metal maniacs around the world. But we will reunite at some point. Are you supposed to be on tour with Ozzy at the minute? Um, that's a good question. Where this was supposed to have been this year the 50th um, anniversary celebration of Priest going around the planet to wow. to support that, Amazing. and everything's gone tits up, and we've had to reschedule, like all of our friends in the music business, and now we're kind of um, doing as best we can to make sure we look after everybody next year. So as I understand it, <clears throat> as we're speaking today, um, we should be back out on the road late May, I think it is, of 2021. It's crazy. Right. We have to plan so far ahead because, of course, it's, it's everything. It's looking after our fans, and then you've got hotels and flights and trucks. and Oh, it's just wow. a, it's a, it's a math, mammoth operation. Um, it's not just five guys on a stage. It's linked to many, many, many people. That's, that's really exciting, I'm, though. Yeah, um, it's great. I can't, can't wait to get back out there and see everybody. So we're a gay and a non-gay, and it's your job, just as you're our guest today, to guess which of us is which. So over <laughs> to you, Rob. <laughs> My gaydar has never failed me. So I'm going to go for the guy with the beard, and I know that's wrong. But, you know. you think, what, you think Dan is, is the gay one? Um, no, I think you are the gay one. Oh, right. No, yeah, I, I am. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Yeah, Sweet. when I'm pushing my when I'm pushing my trolley, Ran Morrison's in Warsaw, my gay dog goes, gay, not gay, gay, not gay. <laughs> <laughs> never fails me. My gay dog never fails me. And also <clears throat> one of us is from Birmingham and the other one isn't. Can you tell which Ooh, one is which? Yeah, that's a tricky one. That's a very tricky one. Because um, as you know, I'm a yam yam from sure. Warsaw, the West Midlands, the the part of the black country. And uh, the Birmingham accent, accent has a bit of a variety in it. So I'm not going to be 100% sure which of you is the Brummie, but I'm going to go with the non-gays, the Brummie. Yes, I am. You got it yes, in one. Well That's done. right. <laughs> yeah. Two out of two. Ten out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, now, not, I'm ha- not from your ends. I'm from the other. I'm from Sutterhall, so it's not really. It's not really. Oh, okay. Um, no, I, um, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, I know that part of town. Yeah. Having read uh, your book, uh, I do. I do notice you have quite a thing for some straight guys. So I'm just wondering: is non-gay? Uh, <laughs> does he need to be worried? <laughs> <laughs> what is? Is that just me? Is that just me, or are, or are gay guys generally drawn to straight men? Oh, you, because I, I don't. I don't think it's a particularly unique thing to moi, you know. This is it. I don't know because I'm I'm not. I find straight men a bit annoying <laughs> for so many reasons that we haven't even got time to get into. I mean, I love Dan dearly. He's one of my best mates after doing this podcast, but I would there's no way I would I mean, he would think differently, but I, I'm not interested. <laughs> I, think, I think the thing about me as we go into the, the book quite deeply, it was just on that issue, it was just me. I couldn't figure out the sexual identity thing. I was so unsettled, you know, I couldn't really figure it out. And um, so, you know, th- those early relationships were, were with pretty much exclusively straight men. And um, and you, you could argue, well, why were they attracted to a gay guy? You know, and, and it's it's all a very it's all very kind of dysfunctional. And and again, I don't think I'm unique in in that search for figuring out who you are in in that sexual identity uh, issue. And then finally, coming 
to peace and balancing it all and, and just getting on with your life. Do you think that they were just massive metalheads and massive, massive fans of yours and they just got, you know, carried away with it, with the whole thing? I think, I think one of them was, yeah. But, but um, Brad, who I lost in a, in a, in a really horrible way, he, he wasn't the least bit interested in heavy metal music. Right. I think he was just a curious straight guy when it came to that part of himself. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that happens a lot, doesn't it? That happens a lot in the entertainment world. I mean, look, Elton went through the same thing, didn't he? I think, didn't Elton go through something like that? You know, um, just some, you know, thinking of people off the top of my head, but yeah, it's not exclusive by any stretch. Yeah. I, I mean, I was so sad to read that part of your book. Um, is it is it hard doing interviews now because people are kind of asking questions about such deeply personal things well you you have to be prepared to really let it all go you know and and, and again i keep saying that because i've been clean and sober for over three three decades 35 years 36 years not that that's it that's irrelevant because yesterday's gone and tomorrow's over there it's all about the now thing but to be able to live a better life in terms of not having, not having to firstly hide my, my, my identity as a gay man, but as importantly, be clean and sober and not have to lie and be, you know, sneak around and put in new endos in everything. So th this is just me. This is the real me. And it was tough talking about that particular moment when I lost Brad. But we've all lost people in our lives, haven't we, guys? Whether it's a family member through just natural causes, same with friends or even in, in a more in a more dramatic way. So it's just it's just me just letting everybody know every aspect of my life, including some of those darker moments. Yeah. And it you know, in our community, there's a lot of those moments, maybe more so than in um the non gay world. I don't know. But yeah, it's difficult and it's amazing that you're talking about it. I think it's incredibly brave and powerful. So thanks. For sharing well, you, you're very welcome but it, it also it also uh, um touches on mental health yeah. and mental health is vital to every single person on the planet you've got to really figure out your head you know get your head sorted and and so you can't stop talking about this guys mm -hmm. you've got to keep talking about it as difficult as it may be and it just makes you um i think it eventually makes you a healthier person and, and it makes you a stronger person all around Reading your book uh, as a metalhead, it, it's um, it's it's almost sad to 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 read how scared you were about you know uh, coming out because of the rejection that you might face from from our our sort of community, um, and, and you know that, that's I've always felt like it's a very welcoming place the the, the metal community. Um, I wonder if you can tell us a bit more about why you were so 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 scared about about revealing yourself. Well, I think because as as I went into my adult life from my teenage years which is which is also a very um it's part of your life journey isn't it as, as you become a teenager you, you start to have more adult uh, themes in your mind and you're looking around the world for again for some kind of balance and let's face it the world the world pretty much exclusively is is straight you know that, that's just a fact we are a minority and as a minority, we get kicked around like a football. We always have been. Um, so you're always fighting one way or another. You're fighting for this, you're fighting for that. So I go from, from my teenage world into the adult world. And then I'm, uh, for a short while at the Grand Theatre, my eyes were opened up. And, and it was great. And, I, and I, even though I was still confused, I was getting some insights into who I was as a person. But then as I went further and grew, grew older, and I went into the heavy metal world. I mean, basically, all my life I've been surrounded by, by straight people, you know, all my life. So, um, and then wrapped that up into the, as it was, the, the very ultra macho alpha male environment of heavy metal. And this horrible fear of if I come out, it might kill my band off. You know, the, all the fans would go off scream, screaming into the night and pitchforks and, and torches. All that was ridiculous from my mind because it didn't obviously work out that way at all. I was, I was completely misguided in that thought process. 
But you see, it, it is all very, it's all so complicated. And we've tried as best we can, Ian Gittins, my, my, my main guy who put this book together. We've tried as best we can to lay all that out and try and explain it a little bit more uh, properly. It's really fascinating to me because I, as you can probably tell, I'm not really into metal. I'm wearing a Ginger Spice t-shirt today. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I have always found it, I mean, I'll just be honest with you, Rob. I found it quite aggressive and, and, and I didn't really ever enjoy it. And <laughs> since hanging out with Dan, I've kind of made more of an effort to listen to it. But I've got a lot of prejudice about metal music and about rock music that I shouldn't have. And it's because I think it's, like you say, like macho. So it was amazing reading your book and hearing your journey because I connected with it and I never expected to connect with metal music in my life. <laughs> Am well, I prejudiced? No, you're not. You're not. You know, I, I lo personally, I love all kinds of music. Uh, the, the only music I, I, I've, I've always had a little bit of difficulty connecting to is rap music because a lot of it is spoken and I love singing. I love, I love melody and, 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 you know, sing along stuff. I know you can, you can, you can rap along with rappers. I'm, I'm not dismissing that because some, I, I know it takes super talent to do what some of these guys do. And I am, of all the rappers that, that, I've, that I've, you know, tried to connect with, there's only one that really does it for me and that's Eminem. I don't know why, but I can really, I can really get into what Eminem does. But as far as uh, our other world of, of, of music, I'm everywhere, you know. I love all kinds of music. Heavy metal is the love of my life in the, in the true musical sense. But, you know, on, on my phone, I've got everybody from, you know, Slayer to Gaga <laughs> to Pavarotti to Hank Slayer. Green. I'm all yes. over the place. I'm all over the place, you know. That, that's the beautiful joy of music. In music, there's always something for someone. And, you know, if you're only into that kind of thing, great. As long as, you, as, long as you're connecting to music, that's all that matters. Yeah. So you and Gaga are like best mates now, aren't you? Oh, I wouldn't say that. I'd like, I, in my mind, I am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, babe, how are you doing today? Click. Oh, I'm just great. I just had a latte. What do you do? I, we don't do that. Oh, no. If we did. But let me just say that um, she's an incredibly talented woman. Uh, she has the most amazing voice. So for a singer to singer thing, I, I think she's uh, phenomenal. And then you look at what she's achieved in such a short space of time. Uh, and she worked really, really hard to get to where she was. But in that time from where she burst out onto the scene, I was reading the other day on Reddit that she, it wasn't last year, she got a Grammy and a BAFTA and a and an Oscar and, and, a, and all these things in one year, you know, she's super, super talented, but um, she's very pure and open as a person and very, very, uh, um, draws you in, you know, every, she's, she has time for everybody. And I think the fact that she's a, she's a, a metal head is even, is even greater, but I've had a couple of Gaga moments, which are in the book. Yeah. Yeah. Were you jealous when she did that collab with Metallica? <laughs> no, I thought it was great because Metallica have been my mates forever, you know, and uh, it was wonderful. I watched it. I, I was here in, in Phoenix watching it live on the Grammys and I could see James was furious because his guitar wasn't working yeah, properly. Yeah. I mean, that just goes to show you when you play live, it's, it really is the true essence of rock and roll because rock and roll should be chaotic. Anything can happen in rock and roll. It's like every pre-show is never exactly the same even though you've done living after midnight a million times or whatever, every, every show is different. So she's all that. So I, I think that was just a really, really great thing for her to say, Hey, you know what? I'm going to jam with Metallica. It's wonderful. It's wonderful that she, that she partners up with, with all of these different people. Are you guys going to do a collaboration together? Uh, well, I would love to. Yeah. <laughs> at some point I would love to. I mean, even if it's something simple with her and a guitar and us doing something, uh. I don't know. You also talk about Madonna in your book. Yes. Um, I don't want to give away too many spoilers because it's, I mean, reading your book was a massive turn on for me. I'm just <laughs> going to be honest. <laughs> like there are so many stories in there that I'm like, wow, I didn't expect to read this. This is hot. Um, but with Madonna, uh, without giving anything away, I just want to know, like, if that had gone on, if that had gone further, would you have gone Take with it? Team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, sexual attraction is, is a, 
is uncontrollable, isn't it? I mean, I, I say in my book about the, 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 some, some of the sexual moments that I've had with girls in my life. And even now, you know, a, a beautiful woman is, is, is attractive to me and, and can be attractive to me in a sexual way. I'm exclusively a gay man. I was going to say I'm exclusively a gay man because then I'm going to go, cool, I could give her one, you know. <laughs> 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 oh that sounded horribly sexist but you know what i'm saying i'm trying i'm trying to have a bit of fun what i'm trying to say is that um i don't think i don't think Madge and i would have connected in the fullest sense of the word, no. well no because i would i mean it's madonna you know what i mean sometimes you just you just would i guess um anyway that was a very candid question so <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for anything guys that's what i love about this place that i'm at now you know and i think that the older you get, I, I never knew that I'd just become this kind of different person to I was in my twenties. And then I, I think I changed in my forties and I've definitely changed as I inch my way to the seventies, you know, so uh, nothing's candy to me. I think it's all great. I think talking about ab absolutely everything and anything is, is a great thing to do. I love the, the, the moment in your book where you say, thank God for Grinder now. Um, <laughs> it's just as a footnote. <laughs> I was on Grindr for about a day. And really? Then, yeah, yeah. I was on Grindr for, well, actually, look, that's not true. It was more than a day. But, but it, it wasn't a very, very long time. Um, because, uh, again, I mean, you'd think, oh, my God, he must be having the time of his life. He goes back to his hotel in Finland and puts, gr puts Grindr on. He goes ping, 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 ping. And the short time that I had Grindr, you know where I got the most pings? in brussels really because my hotel was around the corner from the is the the eu the european mm. union oh uh, wow and i found out i found out that the hotel that i was in was like the hotel that all the people that worked all the politicians and everybody and everybody that works there they were all on grinder <laughs> oh i mean they gosh. were like the next door over <laughs> it's like every floor was going ping 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 <laughs> that's so but, funny uh, but back it in the 70s and 80s, I mean, girls <laughs> were throwing themselves at you. So how did you find blokes? Men? I didn't. I, I didn't. And that's why I, I, I resorted to um, that, that dangerous escapism. It, it's, it's kind of poignant and a little bit sad that the only way I could um, gain that kind of little bit of an intimate experience and a thrill was to go cruising, you know, to go cottaging. And... Um, that was only that was the only way I, I was finding some kind of uh, connection with another person that was the same as me. Um, so yeah, it was it was just very risky, and I nearly lost my life because I got I got hepatitis after that one episode in a gay club in Newcastle. You know, went back to Spain the next day, and then a, about a week later, Glenn's going, "Your eyeballs are really yellow, dude. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Are you wearing contact lenses?" Look in the mirror. And we call the doctor and he goes, you've got advanced hepatitis. We need to start sticking globulin or whatever it is in your bum for, wow. for 10 days. So, um, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't have any connectivity whatsoever because, again, I was protecting the band and I was protecting all of the people around me. And I was doing what a lot of us do is we're putting everybody else first and we're putting ourselves second. You can't do that to yourself, you know. You've got to get, get your own house in order as best you can. Look after yourself, love yourself, and then you can look after everything else. So when you, when you eventually came out, it wasn't really the, the big deal that you'd, you'd bigged it up to be. But do you think it would have been if you'd, have, if you'd just gone in the 70s like, fuck it, I'm gay? Yeah, I think so. I mean, there were, there were some advances like Bowie was making with his, you know, declaring his bisexuality and a few other people. Mark, Bo Mark Boland was very androgynous. There was a lot of there was a lot of that going on, you know. I mean, I remember a band called Sweet, and they would one of the guys would just go on all glammed up, you know. And then Gary Glitter and all ugh, shouldn't have said that name. But <laughs> I was all, say. All, all of those all of those people. Do you know what I'm saying? In the <laughs> 70s and the glam rock thing, and then in the 80s with my mates like Motley Crue, the way they dressed up and looked, and a lot of other bands like Poison and so forth. There was this very blurry kind of thing going on. But nobody really questioned those guys. Nobody went, oh, I hate you because of the way you look and blah, blah, blah. None of that happened. 
because I suppose really it wasn't metal in the truest sense. So yeah, there was, there was a lot of fear on my part. And when I did come out, it was like a big, oh, whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, we knew. Or the main reaction was, so what, we don't care. And yeah. that's just the way the metal community is. It's inclusive and it brings everybody in. Yeah. And did you think when, when you did come out, were you thinking that you were potentially, you know, the floodgates were going were, were, were gonna to open and all sorts of metal singers and guitarists and drummers were, were going to come out? No, that didn't happen, did it? No. So, <laughs> no. And I, I, I don't, I, I can honestly say that I don't know of any other uh, gay metalheads that are in, in the same uh, job that I am, either as a single or in a band. Yeah. Uh, there's, there have been one or two. That would be unfair to say there aren't. But, you know, some people just are happy to be where they're at. And, you know, at the end of the day, all, all of this labeling and branding and everything, it's just, it's a disservice to each other. Sure. I wish we, I wish we didn't have to, um, I, look, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a gay, I'm a proud gay man. You know, I'm full of gay pride. But I, I just wish that we wouldn't have to keep have, having to have these these um, th these differences and 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 all of this kind of pushback and attack and terrible things that are, that are happening to some of us in different parts of the world. So you know, like I say, we're, we're a minority, and any minority just gets pushed around, and we've had enough, guys. We've had enough, and we're yeah. we're fighting back more than ever now. Do you um we we've received messages from from listeners I guess that are in different types of circles to maybe the one I'm in where I'm just surrounded by gay people all the time, and you just saying like in metal you kind of feel like you're one of the only out gay men. Does that feel lonely? And and if so, like how do you combat com combat that combat that? Not really, no, because you know it's unconditional love with me. I don't find any, I don't find anything that's kind of. Uh, fragmented or, or separated so I, I i just i'm just at a, at a at a peaceful place to to a great extent and yeah. um i'm just i'm just happy and grateful to be where i am right now obviously you've played out all over the world um do you meet a lot of, of uh gay metal fans uh, after shows and and what and whatnot that, that that come up to you and thank you for for you know trailblazing all the time, yeah. Especially at hotels, I, I, I love just to hang out with with the fans at the at the hotels because you, you can spend a little bit more time. Um, what time I, I do have? Because like every minute of my day is planned when, when we're touring, like it is for all of us. But oh, it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful, you know. You know, everywhere, all around the planet. And all all kinds of guys, you know. <laughs> it's just great. It's great, uh, and you know the love and and the and the thank yous and the whispering. I'm a gay too, you know. It, it's just <laughs> fabulous. It's fabulous, you know. It just it just makes my day t uh, time and time again. And have you noticed like an upturn in that o over the years? Um, probably so. Yeah, I would say that's true. Absolutely. It was definitely wasn't there that, that, that I was aware of. I mean, I could spot my guys in the crowd and, and even more so now because they've got the things up, you know, they're waving the flag and everything. And uh, my leather guys and everybody, they're all there. And I can see, <laughs> like, hello, hello. hello. So, um, so that's very, that's very real in that sense. But for the longest time, um, no, I mean, let's face it, you know, been gay metalhead since day one. It's only been in recent time that we're just like pushing up to the front row and head banging over, over yeah. the barriers. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of leather. I mean, there's always been a lot of leather in your shows, lots of motorbikes. Um, were your band surprised when you did come out? Did they know sooner than the rest of the world? Ooh. No, they knew, they, knew from, they knew from day one. They knew from day one, absolutely. And, and I, we never really had a discussion you know, uh, about that, that side of my being who I am, all, all they were wanted was a, was a, was a, a lead singer that could belt out some tunes. And, and so that's just, that was just beautiful from, from the rest of the band. There was complete acceptance, you know, um, we never, we never had the conversation and, um, I guess they never felt that it was necessary, which it wasn't. Because I was there to sing and do my work in Judas Priest. Yeah. 
Was it frustrating? Presumably, I mean, I mean, you, you write about this in the book, but you, you could probably guess that this was the case anyway, just from you being in a massive rock band at the time that you were, <laughs> you know, uh, touring the world and, and whatnot. Um, it must have been awful with just girls hanging around all the other guys and, and you know, no, no blokes <laughs> hanging around in the, in the same sort of sense. Yeah, because we all have needs, don't we? <laughs> we all have the needs. And this is the this is the um, this is the other the part of what we talk about in the book. You start reaching for a drink, and then another drink, and another drink, yeah. you know, and then you you discover the the amazing world of cocaine, and um, and then it just it just kind of amplifies and amplifies, and and then suddenly it starts to control your life, and then you realise you're an addict. You can't just have one drink or one line of Coke. You've got like stick a pound of Coke up your nose and six bottles of Jack Daniels and you still want more, you know, it's just insane. So that's how I would kind of uh, blur that pain out. I I would just go back to my hotel room and drink myself silly and then black out and then somebody would shake me awake the next day and off we'd go to the next town, the next show. I mean, that's such a familiar story for so many people. And, uh, like, is there a way to bypass that? Because I've been in a similar place and it's like you have to do that to then realize you've got all this shame and that you need to get rid of it. And I don't know, why, why does it have to be like that? Why can't we just be okay? I, I, I know. Can I, <laughs> can I have an okay pill, please? Oh, I, feel okay now. I tell you, I'm it's, on one of the, it's one of the, it's one of the great, um, I was going to say challenges in life. You know, life isn't easy, is it, guys? Life is pretty hard. No matter how easy you think it is, it's not. Life is tough. I think it's all a big test for where we go pop off to next. That's my personal thing. I think that so many of us can relate to uh, incidents in this book, Confess, uh, if not for ourselves, but to family members or close friends or co-workers. I'm not exclusive by any stretch of the imagination, but... I don't know what it is. It's just a rite of passage for a lot of us growing up. And I, I think that anybody that says they've had a perfectly smooth, uneventful life is not telling the truth. Because, you know, you have to be able to be prepared to bump into things and have things smack you around. And, and, and it's up to you to figure that out. How are you going to make that better? How are you going to improve your life? You know, how are you going to change the circumstances? so that um, living your life is, is as good and as great as it should be for you personally. And that's not a selfish thing to do but, uh, at all. You know, like I said earlier, you've, you've got to put your own house in order to be yeah. able to, to move on and, and live and love life. Dan absolutely loves talking about my mental health. So I'm really glad that we've got into this <laughs> on the podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, he loves you know, I, I, I talk about my depression. When I quit drinking and drugging, I would still have my, you, you know, my, um, my, my days where depression would creep in. You know, why am I suddenly feeling this way? What's going on? Everything's yeah. great. You know, why, ever, why is everything around me turning dark and then I'm feeling miserable? There's no reason because like, everything's wonderful, you know. And, and that's the... Um, that's the trauma of, of, of mental health, this part in, of, of us in our brain that it seems to take over. And then we have to try and find the ways to deal with it. And I've said a million times, this is a great way to deal with it. Just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. You talk about Scylla Black in the book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what an icon, a, a gay icon, but just an icon in general. How did that go down? How was that? <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes. Firstly, I mean, in Buckingham Palace, <laughs> for, a, for a lad from Walsall just seemed like a, you know, surreal. And I'm standing by myself because we couldn't bring friends with us because I wanted to keep it tight and, you know, and, and just avoid having thousands of people. It was, it was a pretty big event as it was, celebrating 25 years of music as, it, as the event was at the time. I'm standing there by myself, I've been in there and I've just got a glass of water and just looking around. And I see this lady on her own in the corner God, that's, is that Scylla? That, that can't be Scylla. Scylla wouldn't be by herself in a corner on the, sitting on a, on a sofa. And sure enough, it was. And I'm looking and she's just sitting there looking around. Nobody's going up to her. I suppose it's because, oh my God, there's Scylla, leave her alone. 
but the guys, <laughs> the guys don't do that. And I, I, got, I got, all right, Scylla. And she goes, oh, hello, love, how are you? And I go, I'm, I'm doing great. I, I said, are you by yourself? She goes, yeah, they wouldn't let me bring Bobby because she was, she was with Bobby at the time. She couldn't even bring Bobby. I said, oh, that's a real shame. She goes, who, who, who have, you've come with nobody, obviously. And I said, yeah. She goes, you had to leave the girlfriend or the wife at home. I go, I'm gay, Scylla. And that was it. <laughs> We were joined at the hip. Oh, come on, Chuck, sit by me. Where have you been? But if there's any bars you want to go, and, and it was just great. It was it was like suddenly she was my best mate, oh my and God. we were there for about two hours, and we were literally put her arm through mine, and she was taking me around, and you know, this is Rob, and you know, blah blah blah. It was just unbelievable, you know. I mean, that was just to, I mean, to meet the Queen was like my head was blowing up, but to be with Scylla, you know, and Scylla <laughs> digging me in the ribs, going. Don't shake her hand. You're not supposed to shake her hand. <laughs> protocol. I had no clue about raw protocol. So that's a lovely story in the book. Yeah. There's a lot of obviously. There's a lot of like body image issues, and a lot of people who are growing up now see a certain type of gay man, and they don't see a heavy metal gay man on the front cover of Gay Times or Attitude. And there's a lot of pressure to be a certain way. Do you have any advice for people that feel like they don't fit in as a gay person? I think that the, the, the whole uh, body shaming and imaging is just as prevalent in the straight world as it is in the gay world. Um, you always have to have somebody with a six pack on a, on, a, on a gay mag and that's wrong. You always have to have some beautiful, slim, gorgeous woman on a, on a, you know, a straight magazine or whatever. It's just mad that we're still at that place. Um, and so, again, just, just push, that, push by that, push by that, because it's fluff. It really is fluff. It has no relevance whatsoever. If you're a person that likes to keep fit, and I've got some really fit straight friends, um, I admire that. I admire your conviction to doing these great things for yourself and for your body, because it does have a knock-on effect. But in terms of the... The, the level of, of it being, you know, superficial and not really, really being, you know, important. Um, yeah, we, we need to, we need to look at that differently. And over the years, it's got a little bit, a little, a little better, you know, for girls who are like plus size, for example, and you, and uh, there's a, there's a whole uh, uh, broader acceptance as there should be that, look, this is your body, be, be proud of it. Be proud of the way you look, the way you are, because you're a beautiful person. It's not what the outside is about. It's what the inside that matters, you know, and in your, in your heart and, and in your mind. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm all for uh, pushing back at that kind of theory that, and especially over here. I mean, you look at some of the newscasters, they're like movie stars you know, on certain channels. Yeah. They've <laughs> got to look like a movie star. And I'm like, what is all that about, you know? Um, so it, it varies from, from place to place. But yes, uh, everybody's beautiful. And uh, is, is, that Christi, is that a Christina Aguilera song? I can hear coming <laughs> in my head. Um, it's all that. It's all that. Yeah. Uh, you're amazing. I'm so honored that we got you on our podcast. Yeah. Thank I've had you a so great much. time, guys. I've had a great time. It's been, it's been really, really lovely. And uh, thank you. And I hope we can get to get to it again sometime. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've just got one last question. Um, what, what, what's your, how do you feel about the state? I mean, James won't care about the answer to this, but how do you feel about the state of metal in, uh, in 2020? Oh, it's good. It's good. I mean, you know, it started uh, in, in the UK, in Brom, around the, the West Midlands. <laughs> you know, we always cite the, the innovators as being priest and Sabbath. And, um, and so we've seen we've seen metal grow incrementally over the decades to become this global force now. So it's, it's really thrilling, you know, and I, I try my best to keep up to speed with all the new bands that are coming and, and, you know, making great strides. So for a, for an, for a, a Gandalf metal head like myself, it <laughs> makes me feel, makes me feel really good. Are you the Ian McKellen of metal? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> yeah, probably. Where's my staff? <laughs> Shall not pass the guy Gandalf. <laughs> what, what does that make Ozzy? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I, I love Ozzy so much. He's just a. Uh, well, where do you start? You know, yeah. firstly, it's that voice for me as a singer. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy's voice get, uh, gets overlooked so many times because of all of the other stuff we think about him. 
but he's got a phenomenal voice, uh, really, really full of character and uniqueness. So he's a good friend and um, he's still recovering from that horrible accident. And now he's dealing with Parkinson's like Glenn is. And so they're heroes to a lot of people yeah, as they should be. And they're still working in their music and in their lives and God bless them. I mean, that, 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 the date that you're going to do in Birmingham with, with Ozzy, that's, you know, that, that's going to be a career highlight, surely. Because presumably that's going to be like Ozzy's last Birmingham date, at least for, for a while. Yeah, I, I, the, the, there, there, are, there are daily conversations going on about how to make all of this, uh, make all of this happen with, with the COVID thing. And for people like Ozzy's generation and my generation, we're particularly prone to, sure. um, to, to COVID. So I, I know that the last thing our fans want uh, would be for any of us to take the risks of, of um, putting ourselves into a dangerous situation. So, you know, it's, it's constantly evolving and uh, it's going to happen one way or another. That's the main thing. Excellent. Stay safe. Yeah, you too, guys. And please, can you get this Lady Gaga collaboration <laughs> on deck for us? There's, there's two things going on over here. There's the Gaga thing, and then there's the RuPaul thing. Everybody's screaming for me to get on RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, my God. Drag. Although I would do it. I would, I would be in drag. I'd be like the Conchita burst of heavy metal. You could definitely drag. do the celebrity version. What's that? They have a celebrity version. You could be on the celebrity version. I could. What yeah. is your uh, RuPaul drag queen name, if you have one? Oh, God, that's a great, that's a great, M mushy peas. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, we have bag of chips in the UK, so mushy I know, it's right. Perfect. Yeah, can you imagine, be a great drag act. Bag of chips and, <laughs> bag of chips and mushy peas. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see that on tour. Thank you Thanks, so guys. much.